Today we're talking about James Earl Jones, who sadly passed away, but he had a heck of a run, man. 1931 to 2024. Jeez. Just an absolute icon, just a powerhouse of an actor. Mm -hmm. And I think I speak for all of us, Kim included, who is now taking over switchboard and uh, computer duties. Say hi, Kim. Hi. <laughs> uh, he was a big part of all of our childhoods, and I think most of the people watching grew up watching James Earl Jones. I mean, this guy was Mufasa. This guy was Darth Vader. This mm -hmm. guy was in Coming to America. This guy was in Conan the Barbarian. Just like the list goes on and on, but just so talented. So, I mean, James, kick us off, man. Let's talk about James Earl Jones. I mean, your namesake. My name, yeah. I mean, my first, what, introduction? Oh, uh, sorry, introduce. <laughs> James made up a word. <laughs> Yeah. I was first introduced to James Earl Jones with Star Star Wars, of course, of course Darth of course. Vader. Yeah. And he just has such like a iconic voice. It was he was so good at just making things sound so menacing. Um it's just oh my gosh, like he, his career was I don't know, just my childhood, I think. Yeah. Lion King, Mufasa. People forget Sandlot. He was the the blind sorry. He was. Blind? He blind was neighbor. Blind. Yeah, he's a blind neighbor, right? Yeah. Um what a great character in there. Uh shoot coming to america i almost forgot about that too he's, oh, man. Yeah, he was he was his dad that was a great one sandlot's a good one yeah, yeah. um <laughs> the beast uh what was the yeah the beast of the background yeah the beast of the background yeah, whatever his uh, dog's name was i forgot what it was it was a uh, goliath it was something like something that right like that. yeah I, some, forget, I forget it's been, it's a, been a while scene, but yeah. it's time for a rewatch i mean maybe yeah. we'll go back and watch some james earl jones movies for sure the sandlot would be a fun one the sandlot it would be a fun what a masterpiece one. Yeah. but yeah so as far as Growing up with James Earl Jones, I mean, my first one would have had to have been uh, The Lion King because that was the first movie as a little guy that I got like obsessed with. Yeah. We're talking like age like three, four. Um, and I mean, to this day, it's like what a just an amazing film, like yeah. one of the best animated films of all time. Um, and then, of course, very quickly on in my early days as, as a little guy, like age four or five years old. Uh, I remember my uncle Brian gave me the original Star Wars trilogy. Mm -hmm. So as far as like live action films with real people, those were like the first films I really got into and became yep. like obsessed with. So his voice was always there. It was like always like there. in my formative yeah. years, it was always there in the background. And um, side note, getting the original trilogy of Star Wars and the original Indiana Jones trilogy, like for the same Christmas, game changer yeah. for my whole life, like loving <laughs> cinema. Uh, so shout out to uncle Brian. Thanks for that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, dude, James Earl Jones, man, what an icon. And then as I got a little bit older, Conan the Barbarian, and then of course seeing him and stuff like The Sandlot and yeah. to America. So yeah, he's just always been there like in the peripheral and uh, he will be missed, man. I think yeah. he touched a lot of lines. He will be, man. But Kim, what was your first experience with James Earl Jones, the, the late great James Earl Jones? My uh, first experience w was probably my only experience because I didn't get to watch Star Wars until I was like... 12 so i was really old when i watched star wars um but was the lion king uh his voice as mufasa was just so dynamic was just so like life-changing i mean even the hyenas are like Ooh, say it again say it again mufasa mufasa uh, do it again mufasa <laughs> Mufasa. Yeah. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And there's nobody who can play Mufasa like him. So I'm a little nervous for the new movie that, to come out. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, that, that's just a movie and a voice that just stays in my mind whenever I get in trouble or even like when I'm thinking, like, remember, you know, like there's something about his voice that's mm -hmm. just so yeah. iconic. He's the voice of reason. But yeah, and I'm sure, you know, so many people watching this probably feel the same way. It's like he was Darth Vader. I mean, it's like you had David Prowse doing the physical embodiment of it, but then that voice just took it to a whole new level as a character. And it's like I saw a clip the other day. You might have even sent it to me on Instagram um, where it was the footage from Star Wars A New Hope with David Prowse as Darth Vader walking with his regular voice. Where oh, he's yeah, talking. Yeah, it sounds yeah. kind of like British mm -hmm. and kind of high pitched mm -hmm. a little bit. And then it's like, OK, there he is. And then they do it with James Earl Jones, and you're like, ah, oh, there's. Start tearing this ship apart piece by piece until you find those tapes. Find the passengers of this vessel. I want them alive. Commander, tear this ship apart until you found those plans and bring me the passengers. I want them alive. So, so like, glad so that they did that. Full and, and scary, you know? Yeah, it was a. Uh greatest decision that they probably made to do that a hundred percent so one thing i'd like to say just highlighting the man as an actor james earl jones i'm scrolling through this man's imdb and i'm just it's long going for a long time but there's a lot of theater work too i believe as well yes he yeah. did the theater work. so let me go to actual his acting career all right so uh his very first role guess wait a second wait a second i i thought he went even earlier hang on yep here we go okay guiding light tv series as 
Jim Frazier, number two. Guess guess the year of his first his first film or his first TV show appearance for James Earl Jones. He was ninety three when he passed away. Guess <sighs> guess the year of his first TV appearance. Warm. Would it be the sixty? I feel like it's earlier than that. I must I must say fifty four. So the Guiding Light TV show says nineteen fifty two, but it says his appearance as Doctor Jim Frazier was. 1966. 1966. 1966. Wow. So from 1966 all the way up until coming to America 2 as his last IMDb credited film project was 2021. And then we had Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries 2022 as Darth Vader's voice. But his oh, actual, so he did do that. I'm glad he did that. Okay, cool. But his actual physical acting appearance was in coming to America 2 as King Jaffe Jofer or Haffy. I don't know how you pronounce it. But yeah, so that's a pretty damn good run, 1966 to 2021 professionally. Like that's he, crazy. He passed away at what at the age of 93? 93. 93. Dude, and he did the voices still. I think I saw him at least in an interview not not that long ago. Yeah. You, when you get older, you start like losing your voice a little bit and everything. Mm-hmm. And, like he still had a powerhouse of a voice. And he's one of those people who signed away the rights to his voice. And a lot of actors I'd say, "Oh, don't do that." But with him, I'm like that's beautiful. Yeah. Like, I'm like, that's so cool mm-hmm. because he can really live on now. Yeah, Maybe can. they'll do that for Mufasa. Maybe they'll do some AI magic. And, you know, even if someone else does the voice of Mufasa, maybe we'll still get to hear him, you know? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I, I know for a fact that at the end of the movie, they're going to put, you know, in memory of, oh, of course. James Earl Jones now. You have to. But, I mean, just going through this guy's IMDb, it's like, coming to America too. you got the newer Star Wars, the Lion King. I'm mm-hmm. obviously got all the Vader stuff. But what else did he do? The Angriest Man in Brooklyn. Oh, dude, that one's funny. I've never yep. seen it. I've seen the clip. Have you seen the clip? No. So he's with Robin Williams in that one. Icon. Ro- Robin Williams needs a uh, purchase a camera, and he's in like a let's say a Radio Shack, and he's yeah. the clerk. Jamie Earl Jones is the clerk, and he has a stuttering problem. <laughs> so he's like, "I need a camera. I need a camera right now." And he's like, "Okay, do you want the Fuji or the?" Panasonic, like something like that, and he keeps asking him. He's like, "Okay," and he's like, "I'll just take whatever." He's like, "Okay, I'll give you this one," and he's like, "Oh, I need something now. There's no, there's no battery life. There's no charge. Do you have anything now?" He's like, "The Fuji." So today, Junior, Fuji's ready. He's like, "Okay, so should I take the Rob Williams? Like, could I should I take the Fuji or should I take this?" And James Earl Jones like. Rarely ever get to hear him swear. He says, "Fuck you." So he was also in the Sandlot too as Mr. Myrtle. I didn't. I don't think I ever saw the Sandlot too. I think it was probably a piece of crap. Um, it wasn't bad. I mean, probably watching it now is probably a piece of, like you said, crap. Um, yeah. I remember watching it earlier when they started doing those. They did the third one too. Uh, it was good to see him in there. It, Sandlot two was just literally just copy and paste. That's a shame. Which is new with new kids. That's all it was. That sucks. Like that 90s show, right? Mm-hmm. But not as good as that 70s no. show. So he did so many. I mean, you guys like, honestly, like just pull up his IMDb. If you're curious and scroll through, it's like a ton of narration, a shit ton of acting, yeah. a lot of TV movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy was just so prolific. So he did the narration for a judge dread. I did have a fun fact to share with you guys please, really please. quickly, especially because James was talking about that stuttering scene in that movie. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, James Earl Jones actually had a stuttering problem when he was a kid, Thank and you. he didn't talk for years to hide it. So the fact that he became such an iconic voice in the industry is a huge, like, miracle. That's a w- 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 win. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's kind of that's that's awesome though. That's, that's amazing that's cool. actually. Yeah, that's great. And you know, it's like I think back. I remember when I was in school. Um, I remember in college there was a kid who had a really bad stutter, and I remember like seeing him working on it and getting better. And like, the, shout out to him. Like that's badass. Yeah. So that's a woo 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 win. But no, seriously, for James Earl Jones to do that, like that's that's amazing. That's cool. That's pretty badass. Uh, okay, so according to Jones, we'll do a couple a couple trivia fun facts. When George Lucas was trying to cast the voice of Darth Vader, his immediate idea was to cast Orson Welles. However, he felt that Welles was too well known for the role. Didn't hear that. So yeah. instead, he looked for an actor with a deep voice like Orson Welles, which is how he got the role. Uh, a couple others. Known for his humility, he declined to have his name appear on the credits of both Star Wars Episode Four. And The Empire Strikes Back, claiming that he felt his contribution wasn't significant enough to warrant a credit. He did agree to have his name appear on the credits of Star Wars Return of the Jedi, 1983. Wait, so I've, I've never noticed that. Me neither. 
I would have to watch it. I wonder if they went and retroactively added them. They probably had to. Yeah. Yeah. So episode six. Sorry. Return of the Jedi. Uh, A United States Army veteran and former member of the 75th Rangers Regiment. Nice. Very fun fact. Still a couple more. Uh, Kim, as you said, he had a stuttering problem as a child. That's true. Still struggles with the problem and says he has to think about what he says carefully before saying it. Impressive since he's known mostly for his narration work. Uh, Took acting lessons to control his stutter. Narrated the documentary Black Indians, an American story, 2001, which explores issues of racial identity between mixed descent peoples of both Native American and African American heritage. Jones himself is a, quote, black Indian. Uh, He was the first established celebrity to to appear on the series Sesame Street, 1969. Really? That's a fun fact. That's cool. To help get over his stuttering, he would write poetry, and his school teachers would let him read it in front of the class. That's nice. That's very nice. What a good guy. Yeah. Let's do a couple more. Um, his, de- <laughs> his death was announced during a live broadcast of an NBA playoff game in April 1998. The deceased was actually James Earl Ray, the convicted assassin of Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah. That or it was a Simpsons writer <laughs> predicting another one. That's so weird. He's the commanding voice that says, this is CNN. This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting System. Uh, he appeared with Harrison Ford in six films. Episode 4, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Patriot Games, Clear and Present Danger, and The Rise of Skywalker. Wow. Yes. All right. And then let's do one last random one. I'm just going to scroll through. In March 2022, Broadway's Court Theater was renamed the James Earl Jones Theater in his honor. That's That'll be nice. my last fun fact. Wonder, but yeah, he I has think, to have a star, right? He has to have one. I don't know if he does, but if he has, let's look it up. Yeah, real quick, we have to look that of up. Of course. But yeah, shout out to James Earl Jones. I think any actor mm-hmm. would just be honored to have a career half as prolific as this guy. Yeah. Just amazing. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Does he have one? No. Oh, really? No. Well, he well, deserves I mean, one. He deserves I mean, one. they've they've done it for people that's passed away and they gave him a star and... Most yeah. of the most of the time, the posthumous award. Yeah, most of the time, their co-stars, family would, uh, you know, accept the award for him. So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure he will get a star. Absolutely. I mean, the man was the voice of Darth Vader. Yeah. Right. So anyway, shout out to James Earl Jones. Uh, much respect to him. We're so lucky to have grown up with him on film and hearing him all those years. And his legacy will just live on. Yeah, man. We'll live on be... in movies and everything, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the beautiful thing about it. Like it sucks when these people go because you're not going to get any more from them. Uh, although with AI, we might. Who knows? But you got to just be grateful for the contribution that he gave to cinema and to the art of acting and to the art of voice acting. And uh, yeah, just what a legend, man. Peace out and uh, farewell to James Earl Jones. Yeah. All right. So be kind. Rewind. And subscribe. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. Love you, James. Peace. Mufasa. Also, we'd just like to add... Per Kim's recommendation, he was also in Field of Dreams, which is fantastic. Just had to add that. Great movie. Not Great a baseball movie. movie. Yeah, no. classic. See ya. Bye. Fuji. Oh. Which one do you recommend? The f- f- Fujitsu or the f- f- Fuji? Fuck you. Bravo.